Moses, called by God. Many years after Joseph, the son of Jacob, ruled in Egypt, there arose a Pharaoh who held the people of Israel in cruel slavery. For this heartless Pharaoh, even the birth of a son failed to bring joy to the home of an Israelite. For he had ordered that every male child of the Israelites should be put to death. And for those who were allowed to live, the future held only hard work and cruel treatment at the hands of the Egyptians. But God had not forsaken his people. The one whom he had chosen to deliver the Israelites from their slavery had been born, and his mother, Jochebed, was hiding him from the Egyptian soldiers. After three months, when she could no longer hide the baby in her house, Jochebed placed him in a basket sealed with tar and left him at the river's edge, where the daughter of the Pharaoh often came. And Miriam, the baby's sister, watched to see that no harm would come to him. And when the daughter of Pharaoh saw the basket among the bushes, she had one of her maids bring it to her. Filled with pity for the crying baby whom she recognized as an Israelite, Pharaoh's daughter decided to raise him as her own son. Do you want me to get a Hebrew woman to nurse the child for you? Yes. Go and find a woman to look after the child. So the baby's own mother was allowed to keep him until he was old enough to live in the palace. And Pharaoh's daughter decided to name the boy Moses because she had taken him out of the water. Thus it was that Moses grew up in the palace of Pharaoh and received all the training, rights, and privileges of a prince of Egypt. But one day, when he saw an Egyptian striking an Israelite, one of his own people, Moses turned on the Egyptian and killed him. The very next day, Moses saw two Israelites fighting and tried to make peace between them. He asked the one who had started the fight. Why are you hitting your fellow worker? Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Are you going to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? This thing is known. Now Pharaoh will try to kill me too, as soon as he hears of it. Fearing for his own life, Moses ran away into the wilderness. <laughs> For 40 years, Moses lived in the land of Midian. There, he married a daughter of Jethro and tended his father-in-law's sheep. But often during these years, Moses thought of the troubles of his people in Egypt and prayed for their deliverance. Then one day, on Mount Sinai, Moses saw a bush on fire, but the flames did not burn it. And the Lord called to him out of the burning bush, Moses, Moses, do not come near. Take off your shoes, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I have seen the misery of my people in Egypt and have heard their prayers. And I am going to deliver them from the Egyptians and will bring them to a good land, flowing with milk and honey. Come now, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may lead my people out of Egypt. But who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, or that I should lead the children of Israel out of Egypt? I will surely be with you, and this shall be the sign showing that I have sent you. 
When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will serve me on this mountain. But when I come to the children of Israel and tell them, the God of your father has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? What shall I answer? Tell the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. But suppose my people will not believe me or listen to me. Suppose they say, the Lord did not appear to you. What is that in your hand? It is a rod. Throw it on the ground. Put out your hand and take it by the tail. Now put your hand into your bosom. leprous and white as snow. Put it back into your bosom again. If they will not believe you when they see the first miracle, they will believe when they see the second miracle. But I am not a good speaker. I have a slow tongue. Who made man's mouth? Did not I, the Lord? Go, and I will be with you. Lord, please send someone else. I will send Aaron, your brother, out to meet you. And I will be with both of you and will teach you what to say and do. After this, Moses was left alone. But the will of God was clear. And as he thought of all that had just happened, he marveled that God had chosen him to be the leader of his people. And as the Lord had promised, Moses' brother, Aaron, came to the wilderness and met Moses. There, Moses told Aaron everything that the Lord had told him and about the miracles God had ordered him to do. Then Moses and Aaron set out together for the land of Egypt. When Moses and Aaron came to Egypt, they called together all the leaders of the children of Israel. And Aaron told them what the Lord had said to Moses. And he did the miracles before the people. When the leaders of Israel saw the proof which the Lord had given, they believed that God had come to help his people and would deliver them from their slavery in Egypt. And they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord. The Pharaoh from whom Moses had fled 40 years earlier was dead. And a new Pharaoh now ruled over Egypt. But from all that Moses had seen, he knew that the Egyptians were as cruel to the Israelites as they had ever been. And Moses' heart burned within him as he faced the brutal king who oppressed his fellow Israelites. The Lord God of Israel says, let my people go and celebrate a festival for me in the wilderness. Who is this Lord God that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord and what is more, 
I will not let Israel go. The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to sacrifice to our God. Why do you keep the people away from their work? Perhaps they don't have enough to do, and that's why they cry, let's go and offer sacrifices to their God. I'll give them something to do. I will add to their burden. Give the people no more straw for their bricks. Let them go out and gather straw for themselves, yet make the same number of bricks. That will keep them busy, too busy to go and sacrifice to their God. <laughs> From that day, the people had to work even harder than before. So the foremen of the Israelites complained bitterly to Moses and Aaron because they had gone to Pharaoh and had made him angry with the people of Israel. Then Moses went to the Lord in prayer, saying, Why did you send me? And the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. Pharaoh was soon to learn for himself the power of the God whom he had mocked. For the Lord caused ten plagues to fall upon the land of Egypt. In the first plague, the Nile and all the waters of Egypt were turned into blood. Then came the plague of frogs, which covered the land. And the plague of gnats and of flies, which swarmed everywhere. Time and again, messengers hurried to Pharaoh from all parts of the land, bringing news of the latest plague to fall upon Egypt. The cattle diseased, men and beasts stricken with sores. And over and over again, Pharaoh would promise to let the Israelites go, only to break his promise as soon as the plagues were lifted. Whenever this happened, the Lord sent more plagues. The harvests were destroyed by hail. Grasshoppers stripped the land and even the sun was darkened. Then came the last and most terrible plague of all, death. It struck the eldest child in every Egyptian family. Even to Pharaoh's house death came, striking down his firstborn son. And there was much grief in all of Egypt. But the plague of death did not touch the people of Israel. For as the Lord had commanded, Moses told each man to kill a lamb and put its blood around the doorway of his house. And they called this sacrifice the Lord's Passover because God caused the angel of death to pass over the houses of the Israelites so that none of his people died that night. And the Egyptians, filled with fear, begged Pharaoh, saying, Let the Israelites go. So Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron to come before him that very same night. Go away from Egypt, both you and all your people. Go and serve the Lord as you have said. So after 400 years, the slavery of God's people in Egypt came to an end. And Moses and Aaron began that very night to lead Israel out of Egypt to the promised land of Canaan. Thus the Israelites left Egypt, taking with them their flocks, herds, silver and gold, and other valuables which the Egyptians were eager to give them. But while they were traveling toward the Red Sea, Pharaoh regretted his promise to let them go and sent his chariots to pursue them. And when the Israelites saw the Egyptians coming behind them, they were stricken with panic. Don't be afraid. Stand still. See how the Lord is going to save you from the Egyptians. The Lord will fight for you. Then God said to Moses, Tell Israel to go forward. And the people saw how the Lord could save. For when Moses, at God's command, stretched his rod out over the Red Sea, the waters divided. And the children of Israel crossed over on dry land.
when the Egyptians followed them into the Red Sea, the waters came together and covered all of Pharaoh's men. That day, the Lord saved Israel from the Egyptians, and his grateful people sang a joyful song of praise and thanksgiving. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my deliverer. 